Hey guys, good morning. It's Angel here. I have a message for you guys. This is a kingdom marriage message. And this is a kingdom marriage message. It's been a long time since I have posted on that subject. For multiple reasons. Um, mainly because I've been so pressed into the Holy Spirit on a whole nother level. Um, I just have not been I don't want to say I've been thinking about it but I guess not focused on it so um I think that's where the Lord wants me to be to be honest now he's been still giving me words and dreams throughout the process but um it just it's just been about a lot of things so I've been kind of pressing into just things that literally um affects everybody the whole world versus people that's on this journey but i never intended to stop speaking on it it just went a little longer than i expected but anyway and more importantly i was just being led by the holy spirit and um the topics that i did speak on were the topics that he instructed me to speak on so if ever i'm not speaking on a subject is literally just because the Lord is not pushing me to do it. Um, yeah, guys. But anyway, I do have a word for you. Um, I want to talk about a dream that I had. I had a dream. I had this dream three or four days ago. And uh, in the dream, I was moving things around. But I was so close to my neighbor's property. I was consistently in their private space. And I had to cross over the yard to get to things that belong to me. Like I unwillingly had access to see in their windows, their garage, etc. I wasn't trying to. I just had access because everything was out in the open. I was able to see inside their windows, in their garage, everything. So this made them very uncomfortable. And I could feel <clears throat> and I can feel the tension. Now, I remember coming home one day and seeing them put fences around their house. So I was unable to cross over their yard and the fences were so high I could no longer see in their private space. This can signify a person leaving a close friendship or relationship where there was a lot of vulnerability. Um, but somewhere along the lines, they became uncomfortable with the things that you were able to see and the insight that you had. And this relationship may have ended as a result. Okay, so moving forward with the dream. Suddenly, I was inside of my home. And I remember having to move my stuff into a different area, which I did. But I recall a particular space inside. Um, it was my closet, to be more specific, that was still shared with one of my exes. I remember telling the guy that I was with... Um, I was in a relationship in the dream, and I remember telling that guy that although we were together, there was still a space that belonged to me that was shared with an ex. That shared space was a closet. He then told me to move everything out of the closet and move everything into his. So I recall like getting super excited about it, and my boyfriend, you know, he wanted to take such a huge step in order to ensure that I was no longer connected to my past and he was making a solid stance in our current status and I remember just like being relieved because it was something that I had I, I've been waiting for him to do so I moved everything out of my old closet that was shared with my ex and I moved everything into the new closet with him suddenly the new closet went from my new boyfriend's to my father's closet as well as his house and the theme changed kind of like how it went from my neighbor's house and everything that theme turning into the closet with my boyfriend then the closet with my boyfriend turning into the closet being my father's and the house being my father's so I woke up highly confused guys I had no idea it was so scattered I had no idea what it meant literally literally I remember just getting ready to forget it because it was just, I honestly had no revelation. I was going to just completely forget it, not even write it down. Holy Spirit told me, write the dream down. As I wrote the dream down, 
every aspect that I wrote down, the Lord gave me revelation behind it. <laughs> so it was all Holy Spirit. It was not me. I was confused, guys. I had no insight. The Lord gave me revelation. I'm so grateful for it, and I'm ready to share that with you. So um, the dream may signify a person making space or making room for you, whether physically or in their heart. Um, it could also be a season in your life where you still have ties to an ex and, um, you have come to the conclusion that you need to sever those ties in order to be yoked with the new that God has for you. Some of you may still be friendly with exes. Some of you may share personal details with your ex. Although you're not together, you may still have an intimate personal relationship Hence, a closet representing things that are hidden and inside of a person on a soul level that may um, that many people don't have access to see unless you let them in. Right. Um, also, I received a revelation for those who are on the kingdom spouse journey. This particular kingdom spouse could have been very closed off and uncomfortable with you being able to see into their souls and reach them on such a deep personal level. It made them very uncomfortable. And for some, some of your kingdom spouses may have, have even felt violated. Um, but this is only Holy Spirit giving you the insight and allowing you to have so much discernment to know what they're feeling. Um, some of you guys, the Lord has given you insight on their uh, personal life in general. And um, this made them very uncomfortable. They are not used to people knowing them on such a deep level. And it made some of them run. If you recall in a dream, I had neighbors that were so uncomfortable with me seeing in their house. They ended up putting their fences up to keep me out and from seeing inside their personal space. So this represents a guard that they may, you know, your king and spouse may have put up emotionally. And for some physically, some of them have blocked you, cut you off. And just in general, they're very closed off and unwilling to let you in on a personal level. So in the dream, the scene where my boyfriend asked me to cut ties and move my things out of the previous space and into his space represents them making a conscious decision to remove their barriers and let you in. Also removing all options that you may have had or have right now by making things permanent with you. So them making space in their closet represents them giving you a solid spot in their life um, on an intimate level in their heart and soul as well. Becoming becoming one, sharing a space in their closet can represent coming into a covenant with them and you gaining an official place in their deepest, most intimate spaces, also representing a marriage, right? So I remember a friend of mine in a dream um, when I told him that I was, you know, moving my things into my boyfriend's closet, we were both celebrating as if like I just got proposed to. I remember like it being such a big deal in a dream because um, it was like a breakthrough moment. It was like serious. It meant that we were finally like making it official in a dream. Guys, I want to add something important. I forgot about this aspect of the dream. Um, another part of the dream I when when I moved things out of my ex's closet, I finally had like a realization that this person and I, we were not a match. So in the dream, I remember putting my hand up towards my ex's hand before moving my stuff out. And I realized that his hand was like a baby hand. And I received revelation that he was way younger than me. And his personality distracted me from his actual age. But I woke up in a dream and realized that we were not compatible. We were unequally yoked. So um, I was I was um, even more excited to move my stuff out and close that chapter officially. I forgot about that part of the dream. So some of you guys may still be attached to your ex or holding on to an ex, even though God is presenting your king of spouse to you. Um, and some of you all have woken up to realize you're unequally yoked, or this could be your kingdom spouse realizing that they are unequally yoked with this person. So that is causing them to um, feel a little bit more confident in letting you in their life and making that next step. Some of you may still have people from the past that's trying to keep you in their life, 
But your kingdom spouse may be coming around to finally put a seal on any possibilities of them being able to access you or keep access to you on a personal level by, um, by closing that door completely. Um, then making a choice to make things official with you and become one with you, letting you in and you letting them in and sharing a space together in a union closes the possibility of you being able to go back to your past because you have now entered into a union. So another revelation I received is some of your stuff being in your ex's closet could represent either it could either be literal and for others of you, it could be that some of you may have an ex or people from the past wishing for the possibility of you coming back into their life, thus keeping you in a space in their heart and in your life in general. And guys, when I speak witchcraft, some of some people out there, literally women or men, your exes are literally doing actual witchcraft. And some of them, guys, witchcraft is a lot deeper than, you know, what you guys may think actually doing spells and consciously getting in front of you know potions and whatever you know to to make things happen guys words and intention holds power right so our words literally can change things in our physical life our words are literally spiritual in itself that's why spelling spelling right when you're writing things down, it's coming from your mind. You're putting things on paper and it's it's turning into physical reality. So if you take the prefix of the word spelling, you know, you have spell, right? Which is literally you casting a thing. You are you are making a thing reality, whether that thing is, you know, you spelling something positive or spelling something negative. So not only does it come from writing it also comes from your words and your mind because the thoughts have to come in your mind first to be put on the paper right and for you to write things down so it's all the same thing words have to be in your mind first in order to come out of your mouth it's the same thing it's all intentions turning into a reality our words hold heavy heavy weight I don't allow my kids to say certain things. My nieces, they don't say certain things. You know how some people joke around and say, oh, you know, kids, how they call each other stupid and stuff like that. Uh, uh, We're going to bind that and rebuke it. We're not putting that out in the atmosphere. You're not going to speak that over anybody's life. You know what I mean? Those things are serious. So some of your exes um, are speaking those things over you. They might be saying things like, oh, I hope they never meet this person i hope they never fall in love again i hope they never you know we're going to bind that up and rebuke it in jesus mighty name okay um that is a lie from the pit of hell and we come against it right now and send those words those thoughts those intentions back to the abyss where they belong okay um so like i was saying guys moving forward um some of them are going as far as the witchcraft um by using word curses and all types of things right and you still in a dream you still having things in their closet represents um them keeping a piece of you spiritually in their possession okay some of these things some of these people may still be reaching out to you trying to keep you emotionally tied to them your kingdom spouse is going to completely release you from this once he or she makes the decision to come into agreement with what god is doing and open their hearts um, and then finally making that decision to join this covenant that God has created spiritually already, but to come into physical covenant. Um, these people from the past, they'll have no choice but to let go and release you from their private space because you, some of you, because you guys are quote unquote, not claimed, single, not married, or some of you guys are separated these people from the past feel like there's a possibility and they're keeping you in their space, their mind, their hearts. They have intentions for you. And what did I say those intentions do? You know what I mean? So once your kingdom spouse has intentions on being one with you and making this thing solid and um, coming into agreement with what God is trying to do, that is going to disrupt whatever the plans that they have is.
because a three strand cord is not easily broken. Okay. It's three of you guys. It's you. It's your kingdom spouse and the Holy Spirit. Okay. So speaking of Holy Spirit, the dream turning into me moving my things into my father's closet and in his home <laughs> is coming into the agreement that God has for me and my relationship. I'm finally walking into what God has for me. I'm in God's territory and entering into the Lord's home, what he is doing, what he had planned for me, you know? So, um, so anyway, guys, so that is what me, uh, moving into my father's house represented guys. Um, because Although you and your spouse are in a covenant, we already know the Lord is the rock of your covenant, right? He is the rock. So it's the same thing moving into my spouse's house and moving into my father's house literally sig signified the same thing. My father was the stone. He is the head of my spouse and my spouse was the head of me, but we're all one, right? And me walking into that area was coming into agreement with what God has for me and coming into agreement with the person that he has for me. So Holy Spirit revealed that to me. Only Holy Spirit. God. All right, guys. So moving forward, right? Um, I was driving to work the other day. This was maybe like a week ago. Okay. And the car in front of me had a license plate with the word try on it. It, it was try 00918 right so funny thing is um this is my second time seeing this car and you know i think that's like rare for you to see the same car on different days you know what i mean um unless we're going maybe to the same area at the same time maybe they work in the same area or something but i still think it's rare so anyway um i took note of that i said try hmm Okay, Holy Spirit. So what are you trying to say? What are you what are you telling me? And so um I prayed on it and I asked the Lord to give me revelation on what exactly he was trying to say to me. Okay? Some of you may have closed your hearts. Some of you may have closed your hearts off and decided to remove your hearts from this promise out of protection or just being spiritually tired. Some of you guys are are tired. Um this could be the other way around as well. Some of your spouses are closed off to you out of fear of being hurt, fear of being vulnerable, and just really not being willing to be open again. And um, not this is not for everybody, okay? By now, for those this is for, this will resonate and you will know it's for you, okay? Um, this will be confirmation for those that, that it's for. Of course, seek the Lord on this word. Always test the spirit. You guys know. So, um, for those, this is for the Lord wants you to try and, um, try a little bit at a time, open your heart a little bit at a time. Okay. He wants you to be open again to this person. All right. Now this is not for everybody. It is so important to not take any word. This is why these type of words are so dangerous, guys. Some people literally change their whole lives and make life-changing decisions behind a prophetic word. Like, this should never be, you know, a decision maker for you. This should only be confirmation to what the Lord is already telling you to do. So for those as for, the Lord is already telling you, open your heart. Just give it another try, Okay. All right, so moving on, guys. So mind you, the number 918 came after the word try. So I looked it up in Strong's in the Strong's Concordance, and it means to mend and repair. It means to mend and repair, guys. So some of you all might be in separation because something your spouse may have did or um, just you guys not seeing eye to eye. The timing was not right. Um, the Lord may have been asking you to separate from this person and it could have caused a wedge in between you all. Some of you guys just, you, you finally, you separated and you feel free and you're scared to lose that freedom and you don't want to go back. Some of you guys have peace and you're scared to go back and lose your peace. You know what I mean? Um, it could be a variety of things. It could be a variety of things. For those who this is for, the Lord is asking you to try and you trying, taking that step to make effort into receiving this person, whether it's unblocking this person, 
sending a how are you to this person little bit at a time the lord will do the rest by mending and repairing it okay and that will lead that will lead you guys into um becoming one because for who this is for you are in that season where you guys are coming together any day now so he is mending and repairing this union because it's time it's time for you to try it's time all right some of you guys are closed off and honestly getting ready to lose out on a blessing it might not feel like a blessing but um guys the only thing you have to do like i said is just try a little bit at a time be open-minded maintain a pure heart okay um keep it open and don't be too guarded yes guard your heart you know everybody likes to use that scripture about guarding your heart but are you using it in your own understanding or or what the Holy Spirit really wanted you to get out of it? OK, because some of you are taking guard your heart to another level and this is not to offend you. This is this is just me speaking to you, sister to sister or sister to brother. God never wanted us to close our hearts. Guard it just means use discernment when pouring from it. This you know, there are some people that use this passage to justify them being unforgiving and hard hearted. <laughs> that God just wants us to use wisdom, but never to be closed and unwilling to be forgiving and loving. I mean, think about it like this, guys. The Lord literally told us if our enemy hits us in the face, turn our other cheek and give him the other side. So does this sound like a, a God that would tell you to close your heart and block somebody? And you know what I mean? Like, and, and mind you, this is not for everybody. For those this is for, you would know it. You know, some people, the Lord is calling you to do that in situations where, you know, maybe you're, you're, un, you're not in a safe home or somebody is threatening you or you're fearful. Or, you know, I mean, use your discernment even in this message, okay? Even in this message, um, for those this is for, some of you guys are literally angry with your kingdom spouse. You shut them out and you are begging for the Lord to bring you somebody else. And, um, you know, you're guarding your heart, but not in the way the Lord would, would um, like you to. So, guys, let's be submissive to what the Lord is calling us to do no matter how we feel because like God's word says Jeremiah 17 verse 9 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it okay in the heat of the moment we always think we're right we judge our hearts and and we feel like we're in the right to protect it in the way that we do right and we get upset we block people, we don't want to talk to them, and we're unforgiving. And a lot of times we can be incorrect, depending on the circumstance. Even when we feel we are right, and for others it might seem as though we're right, in God's eyes, he might feel completely different, and a lot of times that's the case. God is someone we can always trust to know what is right and to judge our hearts accurately. So we got to trust in him, guys. You know, no matter how we feel, if he tells you, give it a try, trust him. It's easier said than done, guys. <laughs> I know, hand up. I'm with y'all, okay? But, you know, at the end of the day, we don't know what's best for us like God knows what's best for us, okay? So he might ask you to do things that are very hard, but because he knows in the end, it will pay off. It will be beneficial towards you. So we have to always trust him because there are things also that he sees in the other person's heart that we don't, you know, especially when you're dealing with someone that's closed off. Their actions could be appearing to you as just not caring, um, not being attentive, disregarding your feelings, being selfish, a narcissist. Some of them might appear to be a narcissist because some of them are used to narcissists and they may have, may have picked up their traits. You know what I mean? But the Lord sees things that you don't see. The Lord sees all the deep things that lies within their closet that you might not have been able to see. Even with the Lord giving you revelation, the Lord knows them on such a deep, deep level. So 
We have to trust God when he says, trust this person, no matter what it might appear to look like. If the Lord says, trust them, it's for a reason. So the Lord gave me more revelation as I was at work. I continued to ponder on that license plate, try to mend and repair. Okay, Lord, I hear you. I'm pondering on it. I'm praying on it, Lord. I, I believe I know what you're saying. I believe I know what you're saying. And he gave me clear, clear revelation, right? I had a co-worker hours later. He was playing music out of his phone, as he usually does, loud as can be, playing music out of his phone. Little did he know the song that he played just struck me. Like my mouth just dropped because this song holds a deep meaning to me on this walk. And it was not a coincidence that the song um, he played was One More Try by George Michael. I wanted to scream, guys, because God's goodness in his mind that is just unmatched. I'll attach the song in the description box below, guys. Um, if I break down those lyrics, this, this video will be crazy long. So I'm just going to attach the song so you can look it up and, and also look the lyrics up. It's pretty much about a man who had a bad experience in life, um, who has been let down over and over, who is still hurt and healing. And they encounter someone who opened those wounds back up just by simply loving them. The fact that they loved them opened up all these wounds and it triggered them. And they, um, he became scared and angry and wanting Um, angry because he found his heart softening and he wanted to stay the same person and that pain that he went through molded him into a person that was closed off and unable to be hurt and he just knew this person that was loving him was going to leave him anyway and you know hurt him again that's that's what he convinced himself but a part of him wanted to try um, this particular person tapped into a space that has not been able to um, be tapped into and it caused this man to spiral um, out of control his emotions and everything just had him just spiraling so the song pretty much concluded to him submitting to that love and saying that he will give it one more try the song pretty much concluded to him submitting to love and giving love one more try for the last time this is the last time he said <laughs> so anyway guys so that was the song and i was like wow so some of your spouses like i said guys with with having a neighbor with the fences up and everything they were closed off guys they were like eh, eh, i don't want this love i see what you're trying to do lord that's nice but i'm not ready so some of them blocked you guys and closed you guys off and you know it's not you some of you guys were you know, some of you guys, it affected your self-esteem and everything. And you were upset with the Lord. Like, why did I have to go through this? This was hurtful, you know, and you're amazing. <laughs> you are the best that God ever gave them. But sometimes the best can scare a person, just like success can scare a person. Sometimes just like success might scare a person guys like having a perfect person also can scare a person because they might not feel like they're good enough especially when they're dealing with trauma and healing and stuff like that um some of them might not feel good enough they they might feel like they're going to sabotage it some type of way because they're not ready for it and vice versa some of you guys you know, you have done a little bit more healing, but you're still healing as well. And, you know, the fact that they rejected you makes you want to close yourself off to them and the possibility of anybody else. And some of you guys, you're just like desperate for somebody else because it's too painful. You know, so um, so anyway, guys, um, I knew when I had this dream, the two were tied together, like the dream, the license plate, the song. I knew it was all tied together. That is how wonderful the Lord is. And um, he reminded me, you know, of the license plate when I got the song. And when I received the dream, he reminded me of the license plate in the song from a week previously. So that's how I knew it was all connected and it just blended all so nicely. God is just so amazing. It's only through his spirit I could not have done that. <laughs> so, 
Um, for somebody, somebody is ready to quit and your spouse is ready to open their hearts up. They have made a decision that they are ready to make space for you in their life and you're getting ready to quit right when, you know, the breakthrough has happened, you know, and it happens spiritually for a lot of you guys. You haven't seen it physically and literally it's already happened in the spirit and um, some of you guys are ready to walk away right at the nick of receiving that blessing and breakthrough. And that's how the enemy works, guys. So I'm here to tell whoever this message is for, do not give up because you are right there. You are right there. Open your heart and try because the Lord is literally repairing and mending you guys in the relationship. Okay. Um, I know some of you guys want the Lord to release you to someone else so bad because this has really been painful for you. And um, you just want to get away from the pain and, and just have peace, you know. And the rejection is just triggering um, things from the past that you might not have healed or have healed, but may, you know, it might have opened up an old wound. And the Lord was healing you in that. You know, he was healing you throughout that. You were learning how to depend on him and go to him to, you know, gain strength again. And it made you guys' relationship stronger. And for a lot of you all, it made you more independent. It took your spouse off of this pedestal you put them on. A lot of you guys, you know, don't shoot the messenger. Holy Spirit is just letting me know a lot of you guys were in idolatry and you were idolizing your spouse. And this really... Um, knock them down a few levels and put things into proper perspective and um, position. The Lord should have been first and then the spouse. A lot of you guys were putting your spouse before the Lord. You're putting your spouse before prayer, putting your spouse's thoughts over the thoughts of, of the Lord and what he's trying to do. You know, this is common. This happens a lot, guys, especially in relationships. But these type of relationships, the Lord wants to really make sure things are in the correct order before um, he allows you guys to come together. So that's why for a lot of you, you, you experience that. Um, so what else? Holy Spirit. Um, okay. And he also brought me to a scripture I just read last night. <laughs> He reminded me of a scripture I just read last night. And that scripture was James 5, Patience and Endurance. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look to the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. For example, of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no so that you will not sin and be condemned. Okay, so this is about the Lord's return, right? Having patience and endurance in the trying times, right? Some of you guys are, are waiting for the Lord to come through on this promise. And like I said, you were just tired and ready to give up and quit. And the Lord wants you to have grace um, in the suffering. And I know it's easier said than done, but this is what the Lord is trying to train you all um, in doing. He's trying to train you guys to be patient in the wait. Okay. And he referenced Job, someone who went through so much lost everything and still still held on to the lord never turned his back on him or what the lord said he had for him he continued to have faith even when it made him look crazy and everybody told him to curse god 
I mean, it is people in your life that are, that are telling you, you heard the Lord wrong. The Lord would not put you in a circumstance that is stressful in general, which is not true. A lot of people like to bring up the scriptures about, you know, how um, when the Lord gives you something, it comes with no pain and no sorrow. But that's not always true, right? So we know the ending The Lord is going to give you peace and joy. But sometimes in the waiting for that thing, there are trials and tribulations. Sometimes to get to that place, you have to cross some, you know, bumpy roads. You know, some of you guys are on that flight, but experiencing some crazy turbulence and and, and heavy duty weather, you know, that's causing your faith to waver, you know, it's causing you to wonder if if you'll even make it to the other side. And that's the enemy. The Lord never promised that things will be, you know, smooth sailing. He never did. He never did. Um, We know that once the fruit is ripe, once we get to that promised land, you know, he did promise us that, you know, we will be um, blessed and we'll be happy with that, you know, with that promise and with that blessing, but he never promised us that it would come with, you know, no pain. I mean, if you just look at the stories in the Bible, every single one of them come with trials and tribulations. All right. Um, And if you find some that don't, it's a small percentage. And that's just the truth, guys. So the other scripture that he sent me to, and guys, I would never, ever Ever. I fear the Lord way too much, okay? Um, I would never lie on my father. Literally, right after I read that scripture, I just flipped the page. I literally just flipped through pages. And my my thumb landed on and um, open to Job. Right after I read that scripture about how to stay patient and endure like Job, he sent me to Job. And this is the last... This was the last page of the book of Job, too. So he sent me to Job 42. And I read 1 through 16. Um, So this video is going to be super long if I read it, guys. If you want to go ahead and read it, um, the scripture, like I said, is Job 42, 1 through 16. For those who don't have a Bible, you can even just Google the scripture and it'll come up for you and definitely take a read um it just speaks on how the lord ended up blessing him after all of the triumph and and all all of the triumph and tribulations and how he cursed well he didn't curse excuse me and how he rebuked job's friends that told him lies and lied on the lord throughout the process of job's patience and endurance and waiting So, um, guys, yeah, so the Lord wants us to be patient and um, enduring and he'll, you know, once he sees that you are steady and you are at peace with what he is doing, that is when he'll bring it to you. For a lot of you guys, it's when you're completely focused on your task, your mission, you're not even really thinking about, you know, that promise so much. That's when it's going to happen. But when you're just... You know, you want it so bad and you're eager for it and you're stressing yourself out, losing sleep and depression sets in. Um, That's not a place where the Lord wants you to be at. And a lot of times he's not going to bring it until you change your heart posture towards um, that promise. And once he sees that, that's when it comes. It's like, what? I forgot you were coming. And then there he is knocking. There she is knocking. You know what I mean? So, guys, just keep your focus on God and what he's doing. Um, Just press in, press in, press in a little harder. And you'll find that you kind of naturally start to just take your focus off of of that. You know what I mean? But just continue to keep your heart open. You know, don't close your heart now. It just simply means letting go and letting God, you know, taking things out of your own hands and your own control and you know, you wanting things to happen when you want it to happen. Just giving it to God is pretty much the same thing as just releasing, releasing the promise back to him. 
And when you get in that position, that's when he brings it. You know, it's completely different from closing your heart and being upset and blocking it. It's completely two different stances. So that's all I'm saying. But that's all the Holy Spirit is saying, guys. And that's all I'm relaying to you. That is the message I'm relaying to you today. I pray that it blesses somebody. I pray that it sets someone free. I pray that it gave you guys revelation for whoever this is for. And I thank God in advance for using me to do that, to keep you strong in your stance so you do receive those promises. Because although this world is going crazy, and we are in the end days, we don't know the time, we don't know the day, nor the hour, okay? Not even the sun knows, okay? And that's what it says in scripture. For, so for those who come up with dates, be very skeptic of that, guys. Just keep your eyes set on the Lord. You do know, just be ready. You know, God does want us to be ready. He does want us to keep our oil hot and in our lamps and ready for him. So always keep that stance that he can come any day. But um, also what the Lord has told me is this is why I know it probably won't be today or tomorrow because the Lord said these promises still have to be fulfilled before he comes. So, yeah, and I think that is still a lot of things that have to transpire um, and we will have to endure a little bit more before he comes. Now, like I said, nobody knows the day or the hour, guys. This I'm not prophesying and saying that he's not coming today or tomorrow. I just know that the Lord said that these promises have to happen. And then I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? Um, I'm not God. I'm literally just his vessel. Whatever the Lord wants to do is an amen for me, you know? So um, whatever he has planned is an amen and I'm on board for whatever he's doing, okay? But yeah, guys, like I said, um, stay strong. Keep your eyes set on the Lord. And please don't give up because for whoever this message is for, your spouse literally is having a change of heart. They are deciding to give it a try and allow you to have a solid position in their life. They are ready for some to make it official, okay? And... Some of you guys, because you're in separation, you don't even know this is happening and you don't even see the possibility. Some of you guys have been separated for a long time and some of you are begging for somebody else and your eyes are set on someone else. And I had a dream about that as well that I'm going to share with you guys. Be very careful about your thoughts and your imaginations. If you have come into agreement with what God has for you and what he is doing um, and you promise him that you will be faithful towards this promise... Um, the Lord will judge you for, for the way that you, your heart posture is about others and wanting something else outside of what God is doing. All right. So be very careful guys. I had a whole dream and revelation about that too, which I'll share with you guys when the Lord leads me to. But anyway, like I said, I pray this blesses you. I hope you guys have a good day. I love you all. God loves you so, so much more until next time. Bye. Guys, this was a long video. If you made it to the end, comment below. I have the strength of Job and the Lord is bringing my promise now. I have the strength of Job and the Lord is bringing my promises now. In Jesus' name, y'all, comment that below. You have some serious patience if you made it through this whole video. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I feel honored. <laughs> All right, guys. Till next time. Bye.